Lenovo's big data management launch. Oh man, Lenovo, they're interesting. You know, I mean, a few years ago, they were doing nothing in storage, right? Go back to 2017 when Kirk Scoggin joined uh, Lenovo uh, as the president of their ISG group. And, you know, server, server market share was in the toilet and getting worse. Um, you know, it was not a, they were not in a good place. Fast mm-hmm. forward six years and they're number, I think the number three server vendor now in the market, yeah. uh, number four in storage. And, you know, back in even as a uh, little as four years ago, they really didn't have a storage play or three years ago. They really didn't have a storage play. Um, now they're number three in the storage market. They're number one in the kind of the low end of the storage market. That's the 25,000 and below kind of space. Mm-hmm. Um, and so this, this announcement really kind of, it builds on that momentum they've built across the low end. Um, they've three, um, essentially three products or four products, right? Um, i trying to remember the exact name. So there's Think System DG Enterprise, which is a high-end all-flash storage array, six times faster than you know, hard drives, uh, 50% cheaper, it uses QLC. Really great for unstructured data, big data, um, AI, supporting AI. Um, then they complement that with the DM300H, which is kind of the SMB version of that. It's more hybrid. It's a combination of QLC uh, and and um, solid state or, or hard drives. Um, kind of, again, though, great value kind of goes up the, the value chain from a storage perspective. Uh, and the last is, um, or the, the next one is, they built uh, Azure Stack solutions on top of this. Um, it's uh, Think Agile Azure Stack, so you can easily deploy this and make use of it for your Microsoft-based apps. And then they built software around um, around managing your storage environment, re- data resiliency, data security. Um, the, the reason I, I bring this up, again, it's kind of like Oracle in that it's not necessarily the products they announced, which are solid, solid products and are going to you know, find a, an audience and a willing market. Uh, and it brings them in in greater competition or better competition with, you know, Dell, with HPE, with, you know, the the other players that, are, you know, have more rich um, storage offerings. Mm-hmm. It's the fact that this company, you know, it kind of, it, it goes back to what I was originally saying. Yeah, you know, they were in a, they've gone from a position of kind of like just be part of the discussion to leading the discussion, you know, again, yeah. going from, from not even on the server tracker to number three, from nowhere, no storage presence to number three or number four or number one mm-hmm. in, in the low end storage market. It's amazing what they're able to do um, and how they're able to establish themselves. I'm really curious to see, you know, storage is interesting, right? The low end, which is more commoditized is, you know, you just go buy what's, you know, best price performance. When yeah. you get up into the the more important workloads, data analytics, AI, deep analytics, AI, um, you know, kind of the in, in massive amounts of data, um, you know, that's a tougher sell. And it really comes down to performance. It's less price sensitive. It's about performance, performance, performance. Um, so while I haven't seen benchmarks, I'm kind of curious to see how they're going to play with this in that kind of higher end. They have a huge presence in HPC. You know, they're number the number one server vendor in the top 500 list. That's going to help them. You know, kind of move some of these servers or some of these storage devices. Um, but I'm really curious to see how this plays out over the next couple of quarters. Given how they've been able to establish themselves, I'm pretty confident they're gonna they're gonna do well. But um, I'll be curious to see. And Paul, I don't know if you look at storage in relation to AI at all, or you know, you have any thoughts on kind of what you see out there. Yeah, you know, it's very important. I was just going to mention, too, uh, Lenovo has kind of been quiet, quietly investing in AI for about six years now. They started back in, I think, 2017. Right. Over that period of time, they invested like over a billion dollars. Yep. And very few people realize that. And uh, a lot of that investment went into the uh, uh, equipment that they've got right now and the AI that they're using right now. They've got They've got uh, like 45 ISVs and they've got like over 150 applications that run on the on the uh, Lenovo platform. So you're right. It's amazing how much they built out that ecosystem and and companies, you know, or not companies, but the market. You're right. It's almost like the best kept secret. I hope they, you know, I hope you know there's a way to amplify that. But it's yeah. a rich, rich ecosystem they've established there. Yeah, very rich. Yeah. A lot. Some of the ISVs. I mean, they've got multiple applications from the same ISV 
like mm -hmm. uh, several retail applications, you know, we self bagging applications from, yeah. from different vendors. And so, so it is very rich. Yeah. Great story. Yeah, no, great it's story. incredible to see Lenovo's growth and, you know, initially, you know, spun off, you know, from IBM, you know, and, you know, focused on PCs for a number of years and really just becoming a major player and, you know, also with depth and, and mobile edge computing as well. Right. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it's, it's, it's quite, it's quite impressive to see their growth trajectory. 